Our guest this morning is Vincent Gardenia. You take a look at Mr. Gardenia's face and you will instantly recognize him as a man who's been in scores of motion pictures and television films. He's uh, joining a program which uh, is probably at the top of the list. You're going to be in Archie Bunker's uh, All in the Family. This is a show that revolutionized television. Right. Events. You're going to be a thorn in his side, apparently, as an Italian neighbor. You're married to uh, an Irish woman. It occurs to me that, in a way, this kind of an ethnic role is not too different from some of those you've played in the past. You have an Italian name, you have an Italian heritage. Would you like to get out of that mold from time to time? Oh, I do. I do. I will never play the same character uh, in a season more than once or twice. My uh, whole scheme in acting is to play many, many roles and many different characters. In fact, uh, I just finished a film where I play uh, Dutch Schnell, baseball manager. And uh, then I uh, finished another film where I'm playing a sort of a Sydney Green Street type. Uh, so I, I really never do play the same character. It seems to me that you're one of those actors, a character actor, whose durability is invincible, that if you wanted to, you could work 52 weeks a year. That's very true. Uh, but it's been my whole career that way. You see, I come from a uh, theatrical background. I started acting when I was five years old. And uh, with my father was an actor. And we worked 40 weeks out of the year, seven days a week. And as I came into the American theater, which was in late uh, 54, that's when I started to work in the American theater, and uh, I didn't understand the uh, reasoning that you would finish a play, then you'd have to wait five or six months to go into another play. I, I, don't, I don't understand this, because you have to work as an actor or as a bricklayer or as a plumber, whatever you do, you can work. You don't take six months off. But as I got to work, it's steady, got better and better, and as you say, if I wanted to, I could work 52 weeks out of the year. I was intrigued by a point in your biography that said that you hadn't spoken English on the stage, you hadn't taken an English-speaking role until the age of 35. That's very true. You were in a nationality theater? Uh, Italian theater, with my father. Uh, I was born in Italy. I came here at the age of two, and I didn't speak a word of English until I was eight years old. And uh, I went through grammar school, barely making it because I didn't speak the language. And I started to work with my father, and I worked my father, with my father until uh, 1952 it was, uh, when I started with the American Theater. And that was my first speaking role. What kind of uh, Italian parts did you play in, in roles? Well, I started off my first play with my father was uh, a shoeshine boy. I was five years old. And uh, they needed a boy to play a shoeshine boy, and they asked my father, you think your son would like to play? And my father said, well, ask him if he wants to, go ahead. And at five years old, you know, you're an idiot. What do you know? I said, <laughs> sure, I'll go on. And I liked it, you know. Glorification and everyone buying me things, treating me very good and taking me here, taking me there. I enjoyed it. Who were the playwrights? Well, we started off, uh, my father and I, started off with Pirandelli, uh, Goldoni, all the famous Italian uh, authors. But uh, when you try to do something uh, literate or something with depth, uh, somehow the majority of the audience doesn't want to see it, you know? So we had to come back and do the popular plays. And we used to run our shows. We had a vaudeville of five or six acts. Then we'd do a play about seven, eight, ten acts. Uh, then we'd do a comedy. In other words, it was a four or five hour show. And you would do this for Italian-American audiences? No, 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 just Italian. Italian audiences, Italian American because uh, we're in America, in this country, in right. this country. but the, it was strictly Italian, we didn't say yes or why, it was all in Italian, in fact it was in dialect Neapolitan because I'm from Naples. Right. What an exciting part of the theater, is it, it was. gradually, that kind of nationality theater like the Yiddish theater has almost died out today in America? There's practically no more Italian theater, but it was a great training stage for me because I played so I must have played, them. my God, from the age of five until 30, 31, 32, uh, maybe seven, eight hundred plays. Uh, a lot of them, uh, you know, we used, to, we used to work without memorization, we didn't memorize, we worked with prompters. So we could change a play every night. And I played so many characters, I remember once uh, in the Italian theater, 
I played my father's father. <laughs> and uh, You played your own grandfather. Right, and uh, the audience loved it. Oh, they'd say, oh, oh no, he's, he's playing his father's <laughs> father. And they bought it, they accepted it. And that gave me the uh, encouragement when I came to the American theater to attack roles that uh, would take weeks to learn. But because I had that uh, training, I was able to attack them. Many of them I did very, very bad. <laughs> but naturally, without failure, you don't have some success. When I think of Vincent Gardenia, and you'll forgive me for this because I know you've played all manner of roles, I think of you either as a very tough cop or a very tough hoot. You've either been a bad guy or a very good guy. Am I far from the truth? There? Right, and I've been a bad guy and a good guy in life, too. I come <laughs> from Brooklyn. You had to be bad there, you know. You had to survive. We but uh, deep down below, I'm, You're a I think heart. I'm a pussycat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I... Uh, I'm scared to death. I, <laughs> I, uh, as this interview is taking place, we're up on the 22nd floor. Oh, my God. I look down and I... Well, I don't mind the 22nd floor. I have a cla I have claustrophobia. I just worry about elevators. In fact, from here, when we're through with the program, and if we're going down, I'm going to walk down. Oh, you've got a pretty escort to take you to. I, I see you. You're behind a desk. You're in Las Vegas, and you're planning some kind of a criminal caper. Uh -huh. And uh, you do that better than anybody I know. And yet, I saw you do something not long ago on the network. We played the part, I think the name of the movie was Cops. Cops, yes, that was a, a pilot for CBS that was scheduled, hopefully to sell for the uh, fall season, didn't sell. It was wonderful, you were a disillusioned well, uh, uh, police captain who had seen everything, and now you were in this backwater precinct and you just didn't want to make any ripples. And it was the, one of the few humorous roles I've seen you do and I thought it was very effective. Well, it's very strange because like, as you said, I look like a very tough person, you know, and uh, when I started out in California, I couldn't get anything but uh, hood roles, uh, mobsters. Uh, uh, and I said, now just a minute, I'm an actor, I'm not just a type. And they, I want to play comedy. I played comedy. And they said, well, no, you're, you're too cynical. I said, but I've done comedy. And they wouldn't let me play comedy until finally, uh, I think it was about 1969, I was called to do a, uh, a show. And it was a gangster show. And I said, no. I said, I told you, I've had it. I don't want any more gangster shows. So the following day, they called me and said, all right, we, haven't, we didn't get you a gangster show. We got you something different. We're going to play a tough cop. I said, what's the difference? <laughs> a cop, a gangster? I said, I'll let you know tomorrow. I'll call you back. I went back to the hotel. I packed up, and I went back to New York. <coughs> Excuse me. My agent called me the following morning and said, well, what is this? You leave? You don't call? You don't listen? I said, well, I told you. I'm not playing any more gangsters or cops. He said, what are you going to do in New York? It's very slow. I said, what do you mean it's slow? They are taxi cabs. <laughs> I can paint the house. I can sell furniture. I can work on the docks. Well, I you says, took it anyway, right? I said, I wouldn't. I wasn't born in act. I can work, but I'm not going to play gangsters at hoods anymore. So I got to New York, and uh, I met a uh, producer. He said, what are you doing in town? I said, I'm back. He says, would you like to do gy Gypsy, Herbie? I said, I'd love to. Do you sing? I said, badly. He said, good. <laughs> and then from that, I went into... Uh, Little Murders, which was comedy. Yeah. Then I went into Where's Papa, which was comedy. Uh, Jenny, comedy. Uh, and many others. Yeah, we don't have time for oh, your great God. list of, of... Listen, as we sign off this morning, yeah. the name of our program is Omelette. Could you say in Italian, goodbye from Omelette, we'll be back in a minute. Omelette. Uh, arrivederci dalla ditta uove. Frittata, diciamo. Is it an uh, egg omelet? Yeah. Because in, in Italian, omelet is frittata. Vincent Gardenia, all in the family. See Thank you this fall.